and my love for John Ross. You intended to fly down with me and try to get him away all along, didn't you? You can't blame me for that, Mama, not for trying to get my boy back. I blame you for using other people to achieve your aims. Mama, I'd do anything to get him away from Sue Ellen. I, she's not exactly the most perfect wife and mother, you know. I don't know what he's being exposed to down there. She's living in sin with a cowboy. Hell, he can hardly even walk. Then why would she prefer him to you? Because she's crazy. That's why I want to get the boy back. You want him back without Sue Ellen? Yes, I'd prefer that. And what would you bring him back to? Being raised by nursemaids and tutors? Seeing you five minutes a day? If he's awake when you finally get home. Well, uh, I figured that you and Daddy could... Could do what? Raise him for you? No, I'm too old to raise another grandchild. You sound like you don't want him back here. That's not fair, J.R. You know I want him here. But only if his mother's with him. He needs his mother more than he needs you or me or his grandfather. I love him just as much as Sue Ellen does. I know you do, J.R. But he belongs with her. There's nothing in this world that would make me happier than if you brought John Ross back to South Fork. But only if Sue Ellen's with him. I saw a part of you I didn't like very much today, J.R. In the past, I've put up with your games and tricks. I've even closed my eyes to some of them. But no more. As long as your daddy isn't here, I guess it's going to have to be me that has to keep an eye on you. Hold on, just stand right here, and I'm going to drink. So, Ellen, now you listen to me. Get into bed and sleep. Try to sober up. And then we're taking you home. Good Lord, are you all crazy? Most of you are Jock's friends. Ah, Miss Ellie, we don't have any quarrel with you. You're a guest in my home. Until you come to your senses, I don't want to see any of you. Now go home. Go home, all of you. Come on, let's go. I'm calling Harv Smithfield. I've had enough of this insane competition between you two. I'm going to court to break Jock's will. And then I intend to sell Ewing oil. Mr. McKay isn't seeing anyone. Get out of my way. I don't think so. I came to see McKay. And I'm going to see him. Mrs. Farlow. You want to tell your pet dog to get out of my way? Don't push your luck, ma'am. Hughes, go sit down. I take it this isn't a social call. You're new in this state, McKay, or maybe you'd understand who you're taking on. Just protecting what's mine. Whatever you're doing stops right now, or you'll have a war. There is a way to have it stop right now. And what's that? Sell part of South Fork to me. I was right. You're mad. Or stupid. No, well, neither one. I'm making you a legitimate offer, and you can name your price. Well, for a man who's been poor-mouthing all over the county, you seem to have come up with a lot of money. I've got investors who will back me. Would you like me to tell you what your investors can do with their money? <laughs> I'm sure you're too much of a lady to do that. No, I'm not. And the answer is no. And the next time... You trouble South Fork, you do so at your own peril.
sure told her off. Shut your face. We're doing this my way. Not for much longer, unless you get some results. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Well, it's good to see you again, Miss Ellie, but... Uh... But you wonder why you were called here at this time of night and by me. Is that right? You do have us guessing, ma'am. Well, you can stop guessing. I called you here to tell you that Ewing Oil is now prepared to pay back your loan. With interest. Well, how nice. I knew you and Oil would be coming through. Did you, Mr. Bradley? I suppose I should thank all of you gentlemen for the aid you gave my son. Now, Miss Ellie, you know it's just business. What I do know is that you were supposed to be Jock's friend, Jordan. And yet the minute his back was turned, you took advantage of JR's situation to charge an outrageous 25% interest to extend your loan. Oh, now, Miss Ellie, uh, you don't understand. I understand perfectly. And what about you, Cliff? How long are you going to perpetuate this stupid Barnes Ewing feud? Until we're all dead and gone? Is it worth it to you? Don't expect me to apologize because J.R. got in over his head. I don't expect anything from you, Cliff. And I don't apologize for what my son did. It's a family matter. We may be wrong and we may be right, but we're Ewings. We stick together. And that's what makes us unbeatable. It would have been nice to have had your company at dinner tonight, J.R. Or have you forgotten that this family still eats dinner together? Oh, I had a meeting in town. I hear you had a meeting practically every night I was in Europe. And that you no longer take time for breakfast. Oh, I don't think I have to account for my time, do I? That's not the point, J.R., and you know it. You don't want to sit down with Callie. Well, that's my business. No, damn it, it's not. It's mine, as long as you live here. And I'm not gonna have you abuse Callie. I saw enough of that with Sue Ellen. That little hillbilly been complaining to you. That's nasty, J.R. No, Callie has not been complaining to me. I also don't like John Ross following your example with her. You know, I swear, I honestly don't know what's going on in your head. <laughs> well, I have my reasons. Well, I don't care what your reasons are. I want you to go upstairs and tell Callie that you accept her as your wife. Or divorce her. It's gone on long enough. Mama, what brings you here? Sit down, JR, where I can see you and get your brother in here. Huh. Well, uh, something better. Now, JR. Okay. Bobby? Yeah? Mama's in my office. She wants to talk to both of us. Could you come in here a minute, please? I'll be right in. Mama? JR, what's going on? Sit down, Bobby. I want to talk to you and JR. Sure. I, I always thought that no matter what happened, I'd always stand by my family. It was always that way with the Ewings. It was always the family against all outsiders. We always stuck up for each other. Even when we knew we were wrong. But no more. It's gone too far. And I, I won't defend either of you any longer. I can't. Mama, what do you mean? I've, uh, I've thought about this a lot. And believe me, this is, 
one of the hardest things that I've ever had to say. But as far as I'm concerned, you two don't deserve to own you wing oil. Mama, well, this is Daddy's company you're talking about. Don't you ever, ever speak his name in front of me again. You dishonored his name and his company. And I guess that's, that's what hurts me the most. Because your daddy would have been so ashamed of you. I know he would. Because I, uh, I sure as hell am. Well, Mama, I know you're upset, but can't we talk this over? I have nothing more to say. You're both on your own now. And as far as Ewing Oil goes, it should have died with your daddy. It would have saved us all a lot of trouble. Out of your hair. You so better I... hope that hearing never takes place, Jar, because if it does, what I did to you before is gonna be nothing! I want this stopped! Do you hear me? Or both of you get the hell out of this house and off this ranch! <laughs> whip to the boy's father before he do right by me. And you may have to do the same thing. I don't know. Come on. I'll help you get dressed. You're coming with us. <laughs> 